Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on this video. Today we are looking through this Knight Rider annual book from the 1980s. I'm assuming you know what Knight Rider is, but for some of you younger viewers out there, you might not be aware. So Knight Rider was a 80s TV show about a crime investigator named Michael Knight, played by David Hasselhoff, who would be sent on various missions from his boss, Devon Miles, from the Knight's Foundation. And of course, there is Kit, the Knight Industries 2000, the car of the future. This was a 1982 Pontiac Trans Am equipped with all sorts of gadgets, and most importantly, artificial intelligence, long before Alexa was a thing. Working as a partnership, Michael and Kit would each week get into all sorts of scrapes and shenanigans, and of course, always come out on top to save the day. Now we're done with that brief history lesson, let's have a look through this annual. Annuals like these would usually come out each year, usually around the Christmas period. This one here cost £3.25. That was a lot of money by 1980 standards. A rough calculation, if this was sold in 2024, would be £9.50. That's a lot. Now, looking through this annual, it doesn't actually state at all in which year it was printed or released in. Don't worry folks, we'll be able to work this out as we skim through the pages. Incidentally, if you check the ISBN number on the online tool, it says it was published in 1982, the same year Knight Rider hit the air. But that's inaccurate as the pages soon reveal themselves. So let's have a look through. So firstly, we have a short story in a comic book style illustration. The story is about cargo smuggling. Nothing too exciting. Devon sends Michael to investigate some suspicious trucks. I like the drawings, they are a good likeness for the stars of the show. This drawing of Devon Miles really stands out for me. And if you look closely, look how they spell Devon. It's Devin. A typo? We'll see. As the story quickly progresses, Michael and Kit already run into some issues with the truck drivers. Notice this drawing here of one of the truck drivers. This guy always reminded me of one of the Comtrom truck drivers from the Pilot Double episode. Is that a bit of a stretch? Maybe. Let me know what you think in the comments. So moving on, what I don't think we've ever seen in a TV series is Kit jumping into the water and sinking to the bottom as a ways of escaping a situation. Rather conveniently, Whilst being underwater, they spot how the smuggling occurs. Oh look, it's Devin again. And so they drive along the seabed and up onto some ramps. Amazing. There's a bit of a scuffle, and as the bad guys try to escape in the submarine, Michael and Kit ram the buoyancy tanks of the submarine, rendering it useless and the cops arrive, along with Bonnie and Devin, or Devin. Here's a word search that my younger self barely started. Just some keywords to find from the Knight Rider world. Maybe the spelling of Devon put me off. This photo here you might or might not recognise of Michael. Standing in front of Kit was one of the early photos taken before the pilot aired. This was a promotional photo that would have been used in adverts, magazines, newspapers or even TV commercials. It may be hard to tell from the camera, but if you look at the nose of Kit, this this was the first version used before he got the more recognisable pointy nose. You can see this flatter nose in various footage in the Knight Rider pilot. Here we have is a board style game, Race Against Time. You have to supply your own dice and counter for this one, and it's a two player minimum for it to be worthwhile. I'm not sure who that's meant to be there, a monster or someone? Here we have is a maze. I'm not sure if I completed this properly or not. I just wanted to do some colouring in. Check out this photo here. This looks like to me another publicity shot of Michael and Kit. But that's not Kit's will, I'm sure you might be thinking. Well, yes and no. If you look at the will here, it very much resembles the same wills used in the season two episode called Custom Kit. Here's a screen grab. 
The only thing I don't see on kit in the picture here is the flame job that they added. Now we have a section about Knight Rider's chief stuntman on the show, Jack Gill. Jack Gill over the years has appeared in hundreds of TV shows and films performing as a stuntman, including shows like The Dukes of Hazard and The Fall Guy. The article interviews Jack Gill as he reveals some secrets from Knight Rider about how some of the stunts are done and especially how Kit drives himself. This carries over onto page 20 and 21. It's an interesting read and to be honest with you I think most of this would probably go over the head of most children which this annual is actually intended for. But reading this now as an adult it's a real treat. This lady is his wife Morgan Brittany. I'm not sure if she is or was a stunt woman, but she seems rather lovely. Now we have another short story. This one sees Michael and Kit on a mission to find an arsonist. It's not a particularly interesting story and I'm not going to read the whole thing out. You'll notice some crude scribblings on Michael Knight's face by my younger self. Another publicity shot here. I quite like this shirt vest that the Hoff is wearing here. Hey, that's me. This section here is an interview with Knight Rider producer Gino Grimaldi. He talks about the show, and more interestingly, he talks about the destruction of Kit, the indestructible car. He goes on to say that technology in the real world is catching up with the TV show. Quote, we suddenly become aware between filming the second and third series that cars were coming onto the market with dashboards which were not dissimilar to the that of Kit. Already there are cars being made with a talking computer built into them with a couple of dozen phrases. Things like reminding a driver that the doors are locked, gas is running low and so on. There are also cars around with television screens and microchip technology is now used to great extent in the digital layouts. So remember near the start of the video when I said there was no obvious marking on the book to state that what year this came out? Well, it definitely isn't 1982 as Gino talks about seasons two and three. Season three first aired in the USA in September 1984. My guess is this book was published in 1985 in time for Christmas 1985. What do you guys reckon? Gino Grimaldi also talks about filming the show how scripts are written and rewritten, and how music is important to the show, stating that the Hoff sings in a couple of episodes. So we're back to another comic strip style story. This one is about a couple of wise guys on the run chased by the police. Michael and Kit take it upon themselves to help, for only things to go awry and they take a woman hostage in the house. They demand Kit as a getaway vehicle which Michael happily and knowingly agrees and eventually they get ejected out of Kit. And here are some more publicity photos. Nicely spruced up by me again. Next we have an interview with Bonnie, played by Patricia McPherson. Though here she is referred to as Patty. I assume that's how the cast and crew addressed her although I've never really thought of her as a patty before. This interview talks about the return of Bonnie to the show. If you were unaware, after season one, Patty was canned from the show as the producers thought they needed someone sexier. I never understood why, as I always thought Bonnie was a snack. The character of April was introduced for season two. And while she was perfectly fine, the general consensus amongst fans, and even David and Edward, was that Bonnie should come back. They got their wish as she returns for the season opener of season 3 and remained until the show was cancelled. Patty says there was never any hard feelings about Rebecca Holden. To quote this snippet, People assume that there was a bitchy rivalry between Rebecca and me because she filled my shoes, but that's not the case at all. She's a really nice lady and we got on tremendously well. She wished me good luck when she left and I hope things go well for her. Reading that confirms to me that Patty was a decent sort. In the rest of the interview, she talks about the filming schedule of Knight Rider, an unfortunate accident on set, and details about her personal life as she was growing up, and what she likes to do in her spare time. It's a good interview, and like the Jack Gill one, it's pretty much wasted on children. 
So another publicity photo and word search. I managed to complete that one. And here we have a quiz. Who doesn't love a night rider quiz? Shall we do it now? Okay, I'll quickly ask the questions and I'll give the answers at the end of the video. Number one, what was Michael's name before he became Michael Knight? Number two, what do the initials flag, F-L-A-G, stand for? Number three, what is the name of the actor who A, plays Michael Knight and B, plays Dev N. Miles? Question four, which country does Dev N. originally come from? Question five. Michael has something inserted in his skull. What is it? Question six. Before Michael began working for the foundation, what was his profession? Question seven. What was the name of the man who started the foundation? Question eight. What do the initials K-I-T-T -T, or Kit stand for? Question nine. Kit has a voice. Is it male or female? Question 10. Kit is programmed never to do something. What is it? Question 11. On the front of Kit is a constantly rippling band of red light. A. What is it called? And B. What does it do? And lastly, question 12. The turbo boost fitted to Kit gives him the power to fly over or crush through things, but it also has another purpose. What is it? Now we have the last story. Michael comes to the aid of another hot woman who is having trouble with some rustlers and cattle going missing. The female character is described as about 30 and extremely pretty. Devon is still referred to as Devon. And eventually, Michael tracks the rustlers and finds some of the missing cattle. And eventually a helicopter stroke kit chase occurs. Kit shoots out a grappling hook and pulls the helicopter down. Punchy Punchy and Michael and Kit have saved the day. And we're at the end. Let's look at the answers from the quiz. The first answer is Michael Knight's full name is Michael Arthur Knight. Number two, the answer is Foundation for Law and Order, which is actually wrong. It should be the Foundation for Law and Government. Otherwise, the acronym, is it acronym? Would be FLOW. Flow. Who knows? Well, that answer is wrong anyway. Michael Knight's real name is David Hasselhoff, and Devon Miles is Edward Mulher. Uh, Devon is from England. There's a metal plate in Michael's head. Uh, his original profession was a policeman. The founder, the founder of the foundation, was Wilton Knight. Kit stands for Knight Industries 2000. Uh, Kit's voice is a male, Kit is programmed to never take a human life, and the red thing in front of Kit is a scanner, and it has an x-ray, can x-ray anything within its locality, uh, and this one is new to me, the turbo boost also acts as a flamethrower if the occasion arises. So how did you do in that quiz? And that's it. If you like this video, please finger bang on the like and subscribe button as it will help my channel to grow. Also, if you want me to read out the full interviews from the annual, do let me know in the comments below and I might do a follow up video. Thanks for watching.